Hi folks, it's been a while since I've showcased any of my work on my MyParts.io component tracking system. I've been avoiding it for a little while, while I've been trying to solve in my head how to implement a particular feature, which I finally worked out how to do, and I did most of it in a sprint on a live stream a couple of days ago. I'll put a link to that just in the top right of this video right now. So if you want to see a three hour stream of me nutting through and working out some of the process, I did that live and that was pretty cool. Since then I finished off the feature and I wanted to show everyone how it works and what it is and why I felt it was important to add and to add it really well. And I also want to show you a couple of other features that I've implemented. So we currently have a whole bunch of parts in the system. If I click all on the parts, there's 96 parts in the database. Now, like I've mentioned before, parts are not stock. They're just the definitions for the parts. So having a 100K 0402 resistor in the database doesn't mean that you've got stock of that resistor. You add your stock separately to that because you could have lots of different versions of that stock. You could have multiple reels. You could have some on reels, some on tape. For other type of items, you could get some things in trays and some things in bags. So if I go to this stock list right now, I've deliberately deleted everything in here. All of my stock is gone. Everything I hand manicured for quite a while. I deleted it all for the purpose of showing you how to get stock in really easily. So what I'll do first is show you how I used to put stock in, and you can still do it this way, and this is still an important way of doing it because not everyone is going to have either ordered from LCSC or are going to want to add all their stock from a bomb download from LCSC. So currently, if you want to add stock for a particular component, you'd open up that component, you'd view it, and then it shows you here there's no stock for this part, and you can click on plus, and it lets you add stock and what you need to add is an order number for the stock and that's important because if you don't add a correct order number for that particular bit of stock then you could duplicate it accidentally by adding that stock again at a later date through another way. The supplier part number you select the supplier and you can obviously add a new supply if you need to. You select a package type for it and you can again add a new package type if it doesn't exist. You add a location type for it. So in this case, it might be a real rack and you then be able to choose what the actual location is. So I've got different colored real racks for my reels. Blue is for 0402, red is for 0603 and black is for 0805. So I'd fill all of that in. I'd then put the quantity that I ordered. So it could have been uh, 10,000 on a reel. So I'd put 10,000 in here and I would leave quantity on hand empty because that would then set that to 10,000 and I can set a low stock value percentage and by default that's set to 20. What that means is that if the stock on hand ever goes lower than 20% of the ordered value, it'll appear in my list letting me know that my stock is low. It'll also show you in the project view, which we'll get to in a moment. So this is how you normally add stock. And then if you added that in there, it would actually appear in this list over here, right? And you can add as many stock items as you want for that particular part. Now that's how I used to get all my stock in. But what I've added now is the ability to import a BOM that comes from LCSC. A BOM is just an Excel download from the order page from LCSC. You just click on it and it'll download it for you and it's got a whole bunch of order information inside it. So if I go to stock, you can see it on the bottom here, there's an import LCSC BOM file. So I'm going to click browse. I've got a few here that I've downloaded and I'm going to show you how they work. So I'm going to grab one that I know all of the parts in this particular order are already in my system. Okay, so I'm going to choose this. And what it does is it shows me a list of all of the parts that were in that order. And it shows that all those parts were found already. If they weren't found, it would import them for me automatically. So I wouldn't have to hand add any of those parts. And it shows all the different quantities and it shows all the prices for them. I'm not doing much with the pricing at the moment. That's for a later time. So that's all been imported. So now if I click continue, what it does is it puts them all into a stock to process list. It doesn't add any of this stock for me because it doesn't know what package types this stock came in. It doesn't know where I'm putting it. So it's very important for me to not allow people to enter data into the system that isn't complete. I know that for myself, if I have an opportunity to not enter all of the data and do it later, I never do it later. So one of the key features of this website is to ensure that people are forced to put the correct data in. Well, they're forced to complete the data. I can't make you put the correct data in, but I can make you put something. And if you have to put something, you might as well put the correct thing. So right now, none of this stock is on hand. 
you can see it's all empty, but it's ready to process. So what I can do is I can click on a, a particular stock item, doesn't matter which one. I'll go to these USB micro B connectors, click process, and it takes me to a screen where I can process it. Now that looks exactly the same as the add stock section that was on the parts before, except it fills most of it in for me. And all it's left for me to do, if I click add now, it'll highlight these as an error and say, I need to add these. So I have to pick up package type and I know that this has come on a reel and I need a location type so I'm going to pick it's going to be in a tub and I know exactly where it is it's actually in a tub on the floor so I can do that and then I can click add stock so it's moved it from the stock to process list it's no longer there and it's actually put it in the system as stock so now if I was to go and view this part in the part system it shows me right here if I view it there's a stock item so if I go back to stock, let's pick another one. I'm going to do 100 nanofarad caps, I'll go process. So I know that these come in a reel and they're gonna go on my reel rack and I know that it's the red rack because 0603 goes on red. Okay, and then what I can do is rather than just do add stock, I can say add stock and next. And if I do that, it'll just automatically load the next one in for me. I can sit here just going add next, add next without going back to the main screen. So it makes it much quicker to work on. So these are 100K 0402 chip resistors, that's uh, 2000. I know that they again on real and they are uh, on my real rack and it's my blue rack because they're 0402. Go next. I can keep processing these until they're done. So I'm just gonna cancel it now. And you can see that the stock that I've added is now on a hand and it's reducing my stock to process. That's all cool. I'm not gonna go through now and process them all. What I'm gonna do is actually import some more. <laughs> so before I do that, if I go back to the dashboard, you can see here that my stock to process has gone up and my number of stock items has gone up. So if we go back to stock, before I import some more, I want to show you just quickly another feature that I'm starting to add now. How would you even know how to do some of this stuff on the website? Well, external documentation is nice, but I've decided to add in-page help. If you click on the help off up here and click help on, there'll be inline help for all of the different sections for all of the different pages. Right now, I've only done it on the stock, but you can turn the help on and off at any time and it remembers the state of the help. So if I had help on and then I went to parts and then I went back to stock, it still shows me the help. So that's persistent and it's stored against your profile. Cool. Okay, now let's go and import some more things. And now let's import something that hasn't been imported before in terms of the parts. So if I click on browse and I'm gonna choose this one just here. And off I go. It starts processing in the background. I've got a modal that should appear here, but right now it's not appearing in time before the processing starts, so I need to put a bit of a delay for the processing. But right now this is sitting there and it's scraping in the background, and it just finished. And as you can see here, it found one item, my LED drivers that I use on my Whopper project, but it also found a whole bunch of high frequency inductors and some switches that I've never imported into the system before. So it's actually gone and scraped all that data and added the products in there for me. So I don't have to manually go and add those parts in. Those parts are now added for me. So if I just, for instance, go and grab that code there and copy it just so I've got a copy of it. So I click continue and on my stock screen, you can see I've now got a whole bunch of parts to process. It's completely paginated. So there's 22 items to process. If I go to my parts and I look for that particular stock code, it shows it's already in the system and here it is. So you can see that it's got the manufacturer, it's got all of the specifications for it, it's tagged it as ROHS, there's obviously no stock for it. So it's gone and done that for me. I don't have to do any data entry at all for that part. I might wanna go though and edit it for instance and maybe I'll stick the inductance into the value. You can see here it's chosen, it's an SMD component, it's 0402, an inductor. It's done it all, it's, it's pretty crazy. So just update that. And now you can see that the value is there. So you still might wanna go in and massage some of the data, but all the heavy lifting's been done for you. So I can continue going to process these now, or I could just keep adding some more in and process them later. Let's go and grab this one. It knows I've already processed this one before, so it says there's nothing new to process, which is good, which is very important. So I'll do this one. It's found a whole lot of parts that are already in the system, which is great, but it's gonna now add them to my 
stock to process. I now have 31 items to process. So the reason I implemented it this way is not all of us want to sit there and go and process all this data in one hit. There's nothing worse than importing 15 items and having to sit there and go and process them all. Or if you walk away, you lose what you've imported. So the parts are scraped for you if needed automatically and they're saved regardless. And then you can, at your leisure, go through and process these whenever you need to. Right? At any time, you can just click on any of them and click real. It's on my real rack and it's an 0402, so it's blue. It's really nice and easy. So that's how I solved the importing of BOM files from LCSC. There's a huge amount of data entry saved doing it this way. And you should also end up with very accurate data and it's entered in the system in a way where you can't accidentally duplicate the parts if you import the bomb more than once because it tracks it against the order number of the bomb and it assigns the parts correctly so you don't accidentally put stock onto the wrong part. One last thing I want to show you is just in the projects view, there's a lot of work still to do in here, but to give you just a rough idea of some things, if I go to my tiny Pico, for instance, and click view, this shows me a list of all of my parts used on my tiny Pico in the project. And then it also shows me down the bottom parts that I've got that are compatible with the tiny Pico. I've, for instance, assigned them as part of the tiny Pico project, but I'm not specifically using them in the project. Things like that would happen when I've changed to a new Schottky barrier diode, for instance. I've got a couple of different SOD 323s here, but I'm not using those anymore. It could be that I've got a whole bunch of, in this case, 10 microfarad caps that are a different brand to the ones I'm using. They're still 10 microfarad caps. Maybe when I ordered them, I ordered a couple of different brands or the brand that I was using, as you can see up here, I've got some 10 microfarad caps, so 603. Maybe these are out and I had to reorder a new set. And so these are the ones that I'm not using right now, but I can use them later. So you can adjust all of these just by modifying the bomb quantities. When you click on bomb quantity, anything that's set to zero gets moved into the not used in bomb, but it's still part of the project. And anything that has a quantity gets moved above. Now, another important thing on this list is it's showing me my stock on hand. So I entered these USB connectors before, a thousand of them, and it knows I've got a thousand. But all the rest of them are marked in red. And if you look at the legend, red means it's out of stock. And if the amount that I had was within the threshold of my low stock percentage, it would mark them in yellow, letting me know that those items are low in stock. So this is where you'll set up your quantities of the parts for your projects. So you'll be able to process them. If I wanted to build, let's say, five panels of Tiny Pico and they're 15 boards per panel, I'll be able to enter the quantity of boards I'm making, click build, and it'll automatically deduct from my on-hand stock of all of my components. So. That's where I'm up to with the project. I took a bit of a break while I was trying to work out how I was gonna handle importing of BOM information from LCSC, but I've done that and it works. And I'm really happy with the solution. It means that, as I said, I can get the bulk of it in and then I can process it as I'm feeling like processing it rather than being forced to do it in one hit. I can just chip away at it whenever I have some time and the parts are here, they're in the system already. I just have to assign where they're gonna go and what their packaging type is. That's it, thanks for watching. I will keep you updated as I add more features to the website. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. If you're not new, welcome back. It's great to have you here. Thanks to all my patrons. I really appreciate your generosity. Until next time, catch you later, bye.